Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am Mr. Black Hammer 2021. Welcome back to another WWE pay per view. Money in the Bank 2021 is in the book. And wow, that was a great pay per view. Now, on this, now, now the pay per view was last month. I'm, uh, now, this, now, this video, I, I was supposed to make the video last month, but I couldn't. Had some problems with my uh, phone and um, everything else. But I will do a 20 or 30 minute video about the. Money in the Bank 2021. Uh, this video was sponsored by Sal Monster, JD, and all my friends in the community. Um, all my friends who love wrestling, who do the uh, wrestling podcast. And now I'm also starting one in my video. I know it's been a long time. I, I did upload the other pay per view that I do. This is Money in the Bank. I will do the SummerSlam review that's uh, this Saturday. That's this Saturday, and I can't wait for that pay per view. Alright, so, looking right into it, it was a good pay-per-view, the tag team matches were great, Charlotte and Rhea, they killed this night, best match of the year, Bobby Lashley squashed Kofi Kingston, Big E won the Money in the Bank briefcase, Nikki Ass won the Money in the Bank, and we will talk about that, and the, and the main event was Roman Reigns and Edge, and they killed this night, the match was 5 stars, it went 30 minutes, the crowd was pumped, everyone loved the match, and at the end then, John Cena made his return. I think we all knew he won, because that's the big match of SummerSlam. John Cena versus Roman Reigns, Seth, Seth Rollins, and Edge. Now, we will go over the entire match. I think we'll start with the pre-show. The uh, pre-show, with um, the Usos defeated the Mysterios for the SmackDown Tag Team title. The match was great. It was epic. The crowd was pumped up for the match. The crowd chanted, um, this is awesome. It was a great match. There, there was a big spot in there when uh, Wayne Mysterio did the 619 and Jimmy Uso jumped in to protect his brother. And then Uso did the Uso splash and Ray kicked out and that was a big shock. And then the Uso won. They got the pin. I'm surprised that they had Jimmy Uso got the pin. He rolled up Wayne Mysterio with the help of Jay Uso who was holding Mysterio back uh, preventing him not to kick out. And the Uso was our seven time Tag Team Champion, a great match. I don't agree with the Usos winning because after Jimmy, because after Jimmy got arrested a few weeks ago for the DUI, it was a fourth DUI. And I know some people are praising that the Usos deserve it. Now the Usos are the best tag teams in WWE, but I don't think that they need the tag team. I think the Mysterials should sure hang on to the belt. They and Gary gave it to the Alpha Academy to Otis and Gable. But the Usos only won because of the Roman Reigns and the storyline that they did. Because they had to keep Roman Reigns strong. And now the Usos and Roman have all three all three towers. And I think that's going to be your stable on SmackDown. And that's why SmackDown is so great. Um, what else? It, it was a good match. And then, the, and then to open the show, this is on the main card. We had the, the Women's Money in the Bank. With Nikki Ass, Naomi Asuka, we had Tamina Snooker, Natalia, um, uh, Zelina Vega, Alexa Bliss, Liv Morgan. This match was awful. It was garbage. This may have been one of the worst Money in the Bank match that these women have ever competed in. Um, there was no fan favorism in this match. None of these women had any momentum whatsoever. The crowd was dead for the entire match. I didn't care about it. I actually was in the shower during this match. That's how bad it was. The match was boring, very sloppy, there were boxes in this match, nobody cared. Man, this match was just awful. And the ending was also terrible. I think um, Natalia was the MVP in this match. She tried to, she tried to, she tried to put in the match. She did her effort, but it wasn't enough. The match was terrible. And the ending was just awful. I mean, uh, Nikki Ass won the money in the bank. Because WWE realized it. Because WWE realized that the gimmick sucks and people are shitting on it. And there's no way that she's gonna get over. And the way how she's been booked the last few weeks have been awful. No one believes in Nikki Ass. I, th I, th I think we all know that the gimmick sucks. I don't know why we have. I don't know. It's bad enough that this pay per view still exists. But man, this map, it was a terrible way to open the show on the main card. And Nikki Ass won it. I think we'll talk about the ending of how. And by the way, Nikki asked, like, like Nikki asked, or Nikki Cross, whatever, she got no reaction when she came out. 
She got a reaction that people were shocked that she won it. Alexa Bliss got the better reaction and she's been just as terrible as Nikki. Now, now, now all the women buried her with ladders outside the ring. Uh, and I think we'll talk about the ending of this match. Where all six women were up on the ladder fighting, trying to reach the briefcase. And Nikki Ash comes out of nowhere, leads her way, and climbs up, unhooks the briefcase, and wins. Now, another woman tried to stop her or, or, or get the briefcase. The ending was, was just ridiculous. It made every woman look stupid. I don't know how they can allow her to get the briefcase like that. Alright. And then after that, we had the Raw Tag Team titles. AJ and Omos. AJ Styles and Omos defeated the Viking Raiders. The map was decent from what it was. AJ and Omos retained. AJ Styles got a big pop. Now, the map was decent. The map was good. Omos is getting a little bit better in the ring. But, um, it was decent. And the reason why AJ and Omos retained because um, they're going to be in a big feud with Randy Orton and Matt Riddle. Because now Randy Orton back on TV. And that's going to be your SummerSlam match. Randy Orton and Matt Riddle, RK Bro, versus AJ Styles and Omos for the one tag team titles. Randy and Matt will win the titles to prolong their storyline and build them up. And, and I think they should. I mean, AJ Styles is too good to be in a tag team. He's one of the greatest wrestlers on the on the entire planet. He's way too good to be um, in a tag team. So, yeah. He's way too good to be um, in a tag team. So, uh, what else? Um, after that, we had Charlotte. Wait. No, we had um, Bobby Lashley versus Kofi Kingston. Now, this was a damn good squash match. One of the best squash matches in the last seven years since Brock Lesnar and John Cena. Based on the story and the feud that they told between Lashley and Kofi, this was the right outcome. Bobby Lashley got his momentum back. He, he squashed him in like seven minutes. I mean, man, the match was a squash. Kofi barely had any offense outside the first 10 seconds, where he went for a roll-up. He dropped a little drop kick. And then after that, Bobby Lashley dominated. Suplex, suplex, drew him all around the place. He hit him against the steel pole. Put him in the hard lock and he passed out. Now some people thought he tapped out or he passed out. Kofi passed out. He did. Kofi Kingston passed out. Match was a damn good squash match. This was the right outcome. Cause the way how they booked Bobby Lashley, of him taking losses to Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods on Raw, him not being focused, him looking weak, him like dancing with women, drinking champagne. And now, now I'm glad that we got the almighty W champion back. He, he squashed Kofi Kingston. Hopefully, he does the same thing to Goldberg. Because the rumor is that Goldberg is showing up to Monday Night Raw. And that's going to be your main event, Matt. Goldberg versus Bobby Lashley. I don't know who could care about this match. No one cares about Bill Goldberg. No one wants to see Bill Goldberg challenge for another championship. But anyway, it was a great match. I mean, Bobby Lashley squashed Kofi Kingston. I don't know what more for Kofi, being squashed by Bobby Lashley for seven seven minutes, or losing to Brock Lesnar in seven seconds two years ago on SmackDown. I don't know what more, but hopefully Kofi stays away from the WWE title. Hopefully he go back to the tag team with Xavier and focus on other things on Raw. So yeah, like the rumor is that. that Bill Goldberg is challenging Bobby Lashley for the same title that he already had. Yet, now I think I will talk about this uh, once I do um do my SummerSlam predictions. Cause tonight is all about Money in the Bank, so I think I will. All right, so up next we had Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley for the Raw Women's Championship. The match was great. The match was great. I thought they killed it tonight. This match was better than their WrestleMania match last year. The match was great. The fans were not into it because the build had been terrible. The storyline had been garbage. Both of these women had been cringe, nauseating on Raw. And, and nobody cared about this match. I mean, the fans chanted, we want Becky. They wanted Becky Lynch. Charlotte was not happy. She was flicking them off. And some people told me that that Peacock was blocking out the screen when Charlotte did the middle finger. 
And I'm like, I don't know why they would do that. This is why Peacock sucks. I'm like, I'm like, Vince McMahon has never seen anyone just flip people off with the middle finger. I, I don't know why. I, I don't know why. But anyway, the map itself was great. The crowd was infected once the map picked up. They did a natural selector. Now the ending was just ridiculous. The ending was dumb. Charlotte Flair was kicking Rhea Ripley's foot on the steel step. And she wasn't disqualified. Now, let's go back to last month at Hell in a Cell. Where Rhea Ripley was banging Charlotte's head on the announce table over and over. And she got disqualified. But here, Charlotte Floyd is doing the same thing, and this time she's kicking Rhea Ripley's foot on the steel step, and she wasn't disqualified. That is some BS right there. I don't know who came up with that idea. Whoever came up with that idea needs to be fired. Released immediately. That was just ridiculous. Just ridiculous, man. And after that, and then the math is over. Charlotte winning the title did nothing. I mean, a real Ripley was a garbage champion. The way how she was booked with that title was terrible. And they took it off her and gave it to Charlotte. And Rhea Ripley is buried once again. Now, I'm not the biggest Charlotte fan. Charlotte may be a great wrestler, but I think we're over Charlotte Flair. And you know, some people say Charlotte shouldn't have won it. But they gave her a standing ovation and people cheered because the match was so good. But Charlotte lost it the, the next night, making this win pointless. Because Nikki Ash cast in her money in the bank on Charlotte Flair on Monday Night Raw. And the way she's being booked have been terrible. But I think we'll talk about that in my SummerSlam predictions. Because I know SummerSlam is a few days away on Saturday. And then after that we had the men's money in the bank with Big E, Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre, Ricochet, Matt Riddle. Uh, John Morrison or Johnny Drifter, I should say. Um, who else? Uh, Kevin Owens, Shinsuke Nakamura. The match was great. It was five star. The crowd was into it. Everyone was over. Nakamura was over. Kevin Owens, Big E, and the White Man won. Big E won the Money in the Bank. He he didn't do much of anything in the match, but he did win it. I'm glad he got his moment. Hopefully, hopefully they do this year's Money in the Bank great. Because last year we had Otis win it. And the way he won it, it was a freaking disaster. And he dropped it to the Miz, and the Miz won it, and held it for eight days. And look, and look what the Miz is now. So, um, the map was great. A lot of big spots, a lot of highlights in this map. The crowd was amped up for this map. I, I was afraid that it would be Drew McIntyre or Seth Rollins. Now, Drew McIntyre is in a feud with Jinder Mahal. Yes, Jinder Mahal interfered. And he, and he, he screwed over Drew McIntyre. Jinder Mahal and his two goons, Veer and Shanky, um, those are weird names. Um, um, they attacked Drew McIntyre and brought him out of the map. Now, hopefully, they keep McIntyre away from the um, away from the world title. He's gonna be in a secondary feud with Jinder Mahal. Try and get me infected. No one cares about Jinder Mahal or Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre is boring as babyface. He got a 50-50 reaction from the crowd because people are sick and tired of Drew McIntyre and were over him. Getting all the rematches, all these opportunities every single time. He boring as a babyface, and now he's in a feud with. And now he's in a feud with Ginger Mahal, so, yeah. But the match itself was great. I mean, um, there was I think there were like two heels in this match, Seth Rollins and John Morrison, or I should say Johnny Drifter because that's what they call him, or uh, Johnny Drifter, that's what they call him. So like Wallace and Morrison at the work worked as a team to take out everyone in this match. Because they had two heels in this match and six baby faces. So um we had Seth Rollins doing a power bomb to Kevin Owens. John Morrison had a water spray and he sprayed Nakamura in the face and Nakamura was out. Um we had uh Matt Widow doing the RKO to Nakamura to Ricochet, Seth Rollins came a curve stomp, and then we saw, now, now my favorite spot was when Ricochet did a, I think, I think uh, Ricochet and Matt Widow, Matt Widow tried to, he pushed Ricochet off the line, and Ricochet went on the um, rope and dive, and that was a great spot, he died on everyone outside the ring, 
That was a great, a, a, a great spot. Ricochet, he's a great wrestler. He's great at what he does. So that's why I love Ricochet. Now he wasn't gonna win it. I thought Seth Rollins would win it, but Big E won it. He did the big end to Seth Rollins. He went up. He won it. He got a big standing ovation from the crowd. Everyone loved it. Now we're all happy that Big E getting his moment. He might cast in a Roman Reigns or Bobby Lashley. Now, now the way how Bobby Lashley squats. Now the way how Bobby Lashley destroyed and squats Kofi Kingston. That's the math I would do. Not Bill Goldberg. F Bill Goldberg. Don't want to see a 54 year old part time we can't wrestle. Big E should be the one to cast in a Bobby Lashley. Maybe at SummerSlam. I don't know. I don't think he's ready to cast in. I gave him three or four months with that promo. With the briefcase. And take him seriously. So yeah. Math is great. And then finally the main event. The main event. Roman Reigns versus Edge for the Universal Championship. This was a great match. It was a great match. It went 30 minutes. It started off slow. And the match dragged on and on. And it finally picked up. The crowd was into it. They chanted, let go Roman, let go Edge. Now, some people thought the match sucked. Some people thought it was the worst match ever. And I'm like, I'm sorry, how? Some people thought it was boring. Boring? More boring than the Women's Dragon match to open the show. Boring. The match was great. It was fantastic. It needed to be what it meant to be. And it does set up for SummerSlam. Because Seth Rollins interfered in the match. He screwed over Edge. Because Edge took his title shot for absolutely no reason. Rollins was upset for weeks. He lost money in the bank. He came out. He kicked Edge in the face. And uh, it looks like that's going to be your feud for SummerSlam. Now, now the match, now before I get into the ending, the match started off slow and it dragged on and on. Like, I think there were rest holes in this match. And then you heard the You Can't Wrestle chant. And the Woman Sucks chant. I mean, I mean like, like people thought Edge was going to win it. I'm sorry. Edge was never going to win it. Edge was never going to be a champion. Rollins and Edge is not where you want to go for the title. And plus, I said that two years ago, Seth Rollins should never be anywhere near that championship or Roman Reigns. And for people saying that Roman Reigns is going to turn into a babyface, he's not. Never should be. Roman Reigns is a god. Roman Reigns is the unbeatable champion in WWE. Nobody's taking on Roman Reigns. Nobody will beat Roman Reigns. He's not losing that title. He won't, and he never will. Uh, the match was fantastic. It was a great match for what it was. The match was awesome. And then we had a spear. Uh, the Usos got involved. They tried to save Roman Reigns. But the material came in. And then Edge had the cross face. I'm actually going to talk about the ending. And then Edge had the cross face. Wrapped on Roman Reigns. The Usos tried to come out. They tried to save Roman Reigns. But the material came and stopped them. They, they brought back days. Out of nowhere, Seth Rollins came from the crowd and kicked Ed right in the face. And Roman Reigns got up. He was sending for his spear. Ed speared him. Roman Reigns kicked out. And a new referee, finally. Finally, we see another referee. As the WWE forgot that there's no referee in this match. And then he counted one, two, and Roman Reigns kicked out. It was a close three count. A very, very strong two count, but Roman Reigns kicked out. Ed was setting up for. Another spear. Seth Rollins comes back. Seth Rollins comes back. The draft as as like an idiot goes after Seth Rollins. He was setting up for another spear on Roman, but he, but he decided to grab the Seth Rollins, and that caused him to lose the title. And Roman Reigns spears him. One, two, three. Roman Reigns retains. I didn't like the end. I did not like the ending because it made Edge look like a complete idiot. But. Otherwise, a great main event. And after that, Seth Rollins beats up Edge. Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns have a stare down. It was very awkward seeing how they go into separate feuds later on in the year. And then, Edge and, like, and then Seth Rollins and Edge, they brawl outside the arena. Roman Reigns gets on the microphone. Paul Heyman gives him the mic. Roman Reigns says, now the whole world can acknowledge me. And all of a sudden, John Cena returned, and the place went crazy. The place, 
erupted that may be one of the loudest chant I've ever seen. John Cena is back. He's been away for like two years. He, he hasn't wrestled a match in two years. He's been gone since last year at WrestleMania. He's never been away for that long. John Cena is also my favorite of all time. I don't think he's going to beat Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is a god. Roman Reigns is the unbeatable champion. No one thinking about Roman Reigns. I see people I see people in the community that are already uh, predicting his uh, demise. It's not going to happen. Roman Reigns holds that title until he meets Dwayne Johnson face to face, whatever that's going to be. Nobody takes him out. Roman Reigns, not a part timer like John Cena or Edge. It's not going to happen. I think Big E should be the one, but Big E's not ready. So John Cena came out, he did the You Can't See Me. And he taunted and the show ends. John Cena and Roman Reigns will, will tell a great story. Will, will tell a great story. As I'm recording this right now, even though the build hadn't been that great, but I think the match would be great. Maybe it, it might not be a one off, it might set up for another match. I think the feud might go on for two months. Like um, after SummerSlam. So, yeah. I mean, John Cena chasing number 17 to break his winning record. Now, this is what we should have with John Cena and Bray Wyatt last year going into WrestleMania 36 if there wasn't a pandemic. But instead, Bray Wyatt lost the title to Goldberg and, and the match with John Cena was meaningless. It was a Firefly Funhouse match. John Cena, did, John Cena told us how he got out of the Firefly Funhouse match. He told us about SmackDown. But yeah, I think that will be it for today. Thank you for watching. Hit that like button. Leave a comment. I'll be, I'll be back with more. This is Mr. Blackhammer 2021. Enjoy my video.